Hi, I'm Jim Humphrey with Imminent Threat Defense Firearms Training. And I've got an interesting one here today, a pre-war Luger. This was chambered in 765 by 21. Before we get started, of course, we're going to clear the area of any live ammunition. And we're going to do a physical and visual inspection of the chamber and the magazine well. Look away, do it again. Be absolutely sure this firearm's unloaded before we take it apart. All right, let's get started. The Luger, more so than most pistols I've worked on, is one that you want to make extra sure it's unloaded because it can be unintentionally discharged even after you take it apart. Obviously, the only way to properly clear a pistol is to lock the action open, but you'll notice the Luger doesn't have a slide stop lever, so I lock it open by inserting an empty magazine and racking the toggle. Now I can do a proper clearing by visually and physically inspecting the chamber and the magazine well. Okay, so a quick orientation. We have the toggle link, the safety catch, and the gesichert, or secure position, the magazine catch, the locking bolt, and the trigger side plate. The action must be closed to disassemble the pistol. After I close it, I'll do one final press check and note the loaded chamber indicator is flush with the breech block, indicating no round in the chamber. Now that I'm absolutely confident the firearm is unloaded, I can proceed with this assembly. Notice the safety catch actuates the safety bar. And in the secure position, the bar is as high as the bottom of the toggle. To disassemble, I pull the receiver back, rotate the locking bolt, and remove the trigger plate. Then move the safety to the fire position. Now, being careful not to push on the trigger bar, I slide off the receiver frame. The reason I want to avoid the trigger bar is because even with the receiver separated from the frame, if I push on the trigger bar just thus, it releases the firing pin. And if there was a round in the chamber, it would discharge. To remove the receiver axle, I lift up on the toggle and then get a grip on it. There's a little spring pressure. The axle comes out easily, and now I carefully release the toggle. And then to remove the breech block, I raise up on the toggle and slide the assembly out the back. The breech block pin pushes out easily, which separates the breech block from the forward toggle link. With a flat screwdriver, I push in and turn the firing pin spring guide to release it. Now, being careful to control the spring force, I can release the guide, the spring, and the firing pin. They all just slide out. I'll use an empty cartridge to show you how the loaded chamber indicator works. The casing seated against the breech face, the extractor is pushed up, exposing the word Galadin meaning loaded, making it obvious there's a round in the chamber. The extractor is retained by a pin. I'm careful to put a little pressure on the extractor when I pull my punch to retain the spring that's under the extractor. The only thing unusual about the extractor is with the pin removed, it has to be pushed forward just a little bit to lift out. There are a few more pins in the toggle link. This one for the coupling link and the toggle axle is retained by this pin. Both are finished smooth during the manufacturing process so I'm not going to remove them as it would wreck the finish. On the right side of the receiver is the ejector. I remove it by lifting out of the back end. On the left side are the trigger bar spring and the trigger bar assembly. The trigger bar spring has a hook on the front end. I lift up on the hook and push it out to remove it. With the spring removed, the trigger bar assembly lifts out easily. The trigger bar contains a spring plunger, which is held in place with a very small pin. 
I'm very careful to leave that punch in place until I've got my finger over that plunger. Otherwise, I'd launch it across the room when I pulled the punch out. Okay, so let's put it back together. I've got the receiver, the ejector, the extractor, the breech block, the firing pin, firing pin spring, and firing pin spring guide, the trigger bar spring, the trigger bar, the trigger bar plunger, trigger bar plunger pin, the toggle, the breech block pin, and the receiver axle. Let's start with the trigger bar assembly. The plunger has a cutout that I have to line up with the pinhole. Then I have to depress the plunger just the right amount to insert the pin. This is one of those one drop pins. The kind you can only drop once because you're never gonna find it to drop it again. I'm careful to make sure the pin is flush so it doesn't catch on the receiver. The trigger bar just slips back into its slot and is retained by the trigger bar spring. I orient the trigger bar spring with the hook side up and forward and then I slide it into the slot. It looks like this when it's installed correctly. The ejector fits back into a slot, but it's also a spring, so it takes a little bit of force to press it in and then slide it forward. It should fit flush. I'll reinstall the extractor spring and slide the extractor on from the front. And I'll make sure the pin is flush. There's a lug on the firing pin that fits into the slot on the breech block. The spring guide has a similar lug and that has to line up with that slot. The firing pin spring guide is pressed into the breech block and rotated clockwise to lock it into place. The slot on the spring guide should be vertical when locked in place. The forward link fits back into the breech block and the breech block pin just slips into place. I have to lift the toggle over the receiver lugs and then press in the trigger bar to get the breech block into battery without compressing the firing pin spring. The receiver axle has a rim on one end and is inserted from the left side. It fits flush. You can see the toggle is loose, so I'll cock the firing pin to tighten up the toggle for assembly. Now I'll disassemble the lower. The trigger side plate assembly is held together with this bent pin. So first, I rotate the pin and drive it out. The grips are easy enough to remove, but note they are inset at the top, so they must be lifted out from the bottom. The magazine catch spring is a leaf spring. To remove it, I press down on the top and rotate it out. The trigger just slides out to the left, but I have to fuss with the trigger spring so that it doesn't get bent. The locking bolt drives out from the right with a few light taps.
Inside the bolt channel, there's a very small locking bolt spring. This spring is removed with a punch from the other side. The safety is retained by a pin that has to be driven out from inside the frame. I found this to be particularly tricky. It's difficult to access and it's also difficult to judge the driving angle. Here's the angle of that pin. With the pin removed, the safety catch lifts straight up and the safety bar slides out. I removed the hole open latch by lifting up on the back of it and sliding it out. The main spring is retained by the hooked spring guide. To remove it, I compress the spring and twist it, then work it out carefully. The recoil lever pin will press out easily along with the recoil lever. Okay, let's assemble the frame. We have the frame, the hold open latch, the trigger side plate group, the locking bolt and spring, the magazine catch and spring, trigger and spring, the recoil lever mainspring guide and mainspring, and the safety bar and catch. It really doesn't matter much which order I install the groups, but I'll do it in reverse order. The mainspring guide hook has to engage the crossbar on the recoil lever. So I have to be sure to orient the guide correctly. The recoil lever goes in so the mainspring guide can engage that crossbar. Likewise, the mainspring guide hook has to hook forward so when I compress the mainspring guide, it will catch on the recoil lever. The whole back lever has a leaf spring that I have to be careful not to overbend during installation. There's a hinge pin in the frame that engages a notch in the lever. Keeping the whole back lever close to the frame, I just slide it into its slot. The safety bar slides through a slot in the frame rail. There is a knob on the safety catch that mates with the hole in the safety bar. The retaining pin drives through from the outside along this angle. The locking bolt spring and the locking bolt go back the way they came out. The spring has to be driven tightly down in its slot. The trigger slides in, but this spring needs a little help so it doesn't get bent. The magazine catch spring has a locking dent in the top end. The magazine catch is retained by the spring, and the spring fits in to this slot on the catch. With the catch held in place, I slide the spring into the slot, and then press and rotate the spring 
so that the dent in the spring fits into this indentation in the frame. When I'm done, it should look like this. The trigger lever only fits in one way. Uh, the trigger lever pin was a little tricky, but I found this 3 seconds inch roll pin punch was just the trick to uh, hold and push the pin. To lock the pin, I had to roll it flat, and that was usually done with the punch. I'll reinstall the grips, remembering to account for the inset at the top. To install the receiver, this coupling link has to be pushed back because it needs to slip into this cavity in the frame. This is easiest done by inverting the frame and sliding it onto the receiver then flipping it over and sliding the receiver slowly forward until the link drops into the cavity. Then pulling the receiver back. At this point, I engage a safety catch. The trigger side plate has a tab that will slide under the frame here, and the trigger lever will insert into the trigger here. Still avoiding the trigger bar, I pull the receiver back and the side plate will slip into place. Then, the locking bolt rotated to secure the side plate. Well, that's about all there is to it. Hope you enjoyed that. I'm Jim Humphrey with Eminent Threat Defense Firearms Training. Remember, enjoy your firearms, Join the NRA and be safe out there. Thanks for watching.